So the traditional view of hunter-gatherer or subsistence cultures is that their life was generally a precarious and arduous struggle for existence. In Leviathan, Hobbes sums up this view of primitive man without government in a quote of which the last part especially has become a famous reference to such cultures. So here it is. No arts, no letters, no society, and which is worst of all, continual fear and danger of violent death and the life of man, solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short, as in 1651. However, empirical data on living hunter-gatherers show a radically different picture, even though they tend to inhabit uh, unproductive marginal lands that agro-industrial cultures see as worthless. Uh, it should be obvious that our modern culture, though more connected than ever, the internet is ironically the most lonely ever. The more primitive the culture, the less its development, the more socially connected it is. As far as poor, a poor man is defined by not meeting his wants and our insatiable wants are making us poor rather than inherent lack of resources. Hunter-gatherers easily met all their wants and needs because they had so little to desire beyond food, family, community, and health. Studies have clearly shown how little hunter-gatherers worked uh, such Cultures spent more time dancing or socializing than working, and their work was hunting, gathering, cooking, crafting, activities which modern humans pursue in their spare time, or at least vestiges of them, like camping or, or hiking. So in the summer of 1964, anthropologist Richard B. Lee recorded all the daily activities of the Kong living in the Dobe waterhole, it's in the Kalahari Desert, and the camp population fluctuated, was about 32 people. Each day, some of the adult members of the camp went out to hunt, and or gather while others stayed home or went visiting. And all the adults of the Dobe camp worked about two and a half days a week. Since the average working day was about six hours long, uh, the fact emerges that the Kung, uh, despite the harsh environment, devote 12 to 19 hours a week to getting food. Even the hardest working individual in that camp went out uh, hunting on 16 of the 28 days, spent a maximum of 32 hours a week in the food quest. And the study was done in the midwinter dry season when food's neither at its most plentiful or its scarcest. So in this camp, a woman gathers one day enough food to feed her family for three days and spends the rest of her time resting in camp, doing embroidery, visiting other camps, or entertaining visitors from other camps. And for each day at home, kitchen routines such as cooking, nut cracking, collecting firewood, fletching, fetching water, they occupy about one to three hours. So this work is steady and is maintained throughout the year. The hunters tend to work more frequently than women, but their schedule's uneven. So it's not unusual for man to hunt avidly for a week, and they do no hunting at all for two to three weeks. During these periods, visiting, entertaining, and especially dancing are the primary activities of men. So during this study period, 410 pounds of meat were brought in by the hunters of the Dobe camp for a daily share of about nine ounces of meat per person. Uh, 700 pounds of vegetable foods gathered and consumed during the same period, so that's uh, about 2,140 calories and 93 grams of protein per day. Compare that to recommended daily allowances for persons of small size with vigorous, vigorous activity, such as the Kung. Uh, they only really need less than 2,000, about 60 grams, grams of protein. So there's a, a surplus of calories and protein. So even a, a modest subsistence effort of two or three days work per week is enough to provide an adequate diet for the Kung. The Yanomamo from the Orinoco River watershed on the borders of Venezuela and Brazil were found to have similar productive efforts, making a living on only a few hours per day. The Yanomamo spent more time blowing hallucinogens up their nose than obtaining food. A major key to this way of life is egalitarianism, sharing resources, lack of resource stockpiling, and lack of stealing. So when hunter-gatherers come into contact with a market economy, they become as acquisitive as anyone else. Why they do this may hold the key to sustainable future. The thesis of Flannery in his book The Future Eaters, an ecological history of Australian lands and people, is that future eating, or consuming resources needed for the future, is characteristic of humans. But environmental factors such as periodic drought caused by El Nino, limited aboriginal population size, and ecological co-evolution created social customs that act to but conserve scarce natural resources. So affluence can be created in two ways, by producing much or desiring little. Hunter-gatherers are in the latter category, uh, the Zen road to affluence. The idea that their subsistence economy is a dismal, undesirable, and difficult life way is an ethnocentric prejudice, a bias of agro-industrial culture and 
economists not based on any anthropological uh, research or empirical investigations. Yet this idea continues even to this day. We all learn in economics to compare economies against the baseline or rudimentary subsistence economy, a mere scraping for survival to compare uh, against a more civilized economy based on stockpiling resources, getting more, spending and trading, with the ultimate idea to possess and consume as much as possible per capita. Fundamental problem with economic theory is utterly ignoring natural resources and environmental degradation caused by development. Where has this gotten us? Look around. In the U.S., the, the standard work week is 40 hours. That's two to three times more than the Kung perform. But the majority of people in the U.S. actually work more than 30 hours per week. And while hunter-gatherers had healthy life satisfaction, community, and exercise inherent in their work, most of us are basically automatons in our jobs and must pursue our life satisfaction, community, and exercise in our spare time. Americans work more and take less vacation than any other country in the world, but the rest of the world, at least in agro-industrial cultures, work comparable hours from around 20 to 50 hours per week, still all more than hunter-gatherers work. Still satisfied with the progress of civilization?